Section 2.3, Linear Inequalities in Two Variables. Our goals for this section is to discuss well, what is a linear inequality in two variables, how we represent the solutions of a linear inequality in two variables graphically, look at an application, we'll also talk about how to use graphing calculator technology. So first, what is a linear inequality in two variables? Well, recall that a linear equation in two variables can be represented by ax plus by equals c, where a, b, and c are real numbers and a and b are not both zero. Graphically, we represented this with a line in the plane. A linear inequality in two variables can be represented by ax plus by is greater than c, where again the a, b, and c are real numbers and a and b are not both zero. Now, that greater than symbol can re be replaced by a less than, a greater than or equal to, or a less than or equal to symbol. The graphical representation, though, is a little bit different. Its graphical representation is a half plane bounded by the line defined by the corresponding equation ax plus by equals c. So here is a procedure we can use to graph a linear inequality in two variables. So in general, if we're talking about ax plus by is greater than c, the first thing we do is actually graph the corresponding equation, the ax plus by equals c. And that becomes the boundary for the inequality. Now, if the original inequality symbol is a greater than or equal to, or a less than or equal to, where this tells us that the line is part of the solution set, and we use a solid line to mark the boundary. However, if the original inequality was a greater than or a less than, then the line, the boundary, is not part of the solution set. We will use a dashed line to mark the boundary. All right, so we've drawn the boundary either with a solid or dotted line. We now select any point that does not lie on the boundary line to determine the region whose points will satisfy the inequality. We usually call this a test point. We take that test point, we substitute it into the original inequality, and if it satisfies the inequality, so that is if it yields a true statement, we will shade the region that contains the point. If it does not satisfy the inequality, we will shade the opposite region. So now let's see a couple examples. First we have, uh, we're asked to graph 2x plus, I'm sorry, 2x minus 5y is greater than or equal to negative 10. So what I will do first is graph 2x minus 5y equals negative 10 with a solid line. I'm using a solid line because it was an or equal to inequality. Recall that if we have an or equal to inequality, we do use a solid line. All right, so I'm going to use the um, the intercepts. Uh, let's see, the x-intercept, letting y equal 0, we would have x is negative 5. So negative 5, 0 and the y-intercept letting x equals 0, we'd have negative 5, y equals negative 10, so y would equal 2. All right, so plotting negative 5, 0 and 0, 2. Now I'm drawing the line through those points, again using a solid line. Now, I will test a point. So choose any point that is not on that line that we've drawn as our test point. Generally speaking, if I can use, if the line doesn't go through the origin, I'm going to use the origin because arithmetic with zero is easy. So I take that test point and I substitute it into the original inequality, two times zero minus 5 times 0, is this greater than or equal to negative 10? 
The left hand side, 2 times 0 minus 5 times 0 is 0. So this simplifies as 0 is greater than or equal to negative 10. Is this true or false? Well, 0 is greater than negative 10, so this is true. So what that tells me is that 0, 0 is a solution of the inequality, and therefore, if I've drawn my line, my boundary correctly, every point on that side is also a solution. And so what we do is we shade the side containing 0, 0. Now, for example, what if I had tested, say, 0, 5? What if I test 0, 5? Then 2 times 0 minus 5 times 5, is that greater than or equal to negative 10? The left-hand side, 0 minus 25 is negative 25. Is negative 25 greater than or equal to negative 10? Well, that's false. So, that point is not a solution, and what that tells me is none of the points on that side of the line are solutions, so again, I would shade the side that I've already shaded. Okay, so getting a false is just as good as getting a true when we're dealing with uh, this. All right, we're asked to graph y is less than 3x minus 2. So I will graph y equals 3x minus 2 with a dashed line. Since it's a strictly less than inequality, we use a dashed line. All right, I notice that this is in slope-intercept form, so I have a y-intercept of 0, negative 2, and a slope of 3. So 0, negative 2, and a slope of 3, so let it rise 3 units and run 1, rise 3 units and run 1. There's a few points on the line. All right, drawing the line, I'm going to draw the best of my ability here, a dashed line through those points. All right, so there's my dashed line. And again, now I will test a point. Well, again, the line does not pass through the origin, so I'm going to test the origin. 0, 0. Is 0 less than 3 times 0 minus 2? Is 0 less than negative 2? Now oh, that's false. So 0, 0 is not a solution, which means the solutions lie on the other side of the boundary. Now if you wanted to double check, you could test uh, another point that is in the solution region. Um, just for sake of argument, what if we had tested uh, 5, 0? 5, 0 should come back as a true statement. Is 0 less than 3 times 5 minus 2? 0 is less than 13. That checks out. So 5, 0 is a solution. Graph y is greater than negative 4. So I will graph y equals negative 4 with a dashed line. So recall when we have y equals a number, that's a horizontal line. So at y equals negative 4, I'll draw a dashed line. And now where are the y values greater than negative 4? I mean, you can test a point if you want, but it's just, you know, just sort of thinking through it. The y values are greater than negative 4 above that line. Graph x is less than or equal to uh, 7. So I will graph x equals 7 with a solid line. 
So recall if you just have x equals a number, that is a vertical line at x is 7, so let me draw that. x equals 7 with a solid line. All right, so there's x equals 7. Now, where is x less than 7? x is less than 7 to the left of that boundary. So let me shade everything to the left of the boundary. All, right, all of the points that are to the left of that boundary have x values that are less than or equal to 7. All right, an application. A Little League baseball team makes the semifinals after beating a higher ranked team. In celebration, the parents and the coach want to order hamburgers and hot dogs for the team members. All Star Burgers charges $4.50 for a quarter pound hamburger and $2.50 for a regular size chili dog. Let X be the number of burgers and Y be the number of chili dogs. If the parents and coach can spend no more than $90 altogether, write a linear inequality that represents how many of each they could buy. All right, so let's see. Well, if we let X be the number of burgers we and they cost $4.50 each, then the total cost for the burgers would be 450 x Similarly, the total cost for the chili dogs would be 250 times y. They can spend no more than $90. So they can spend $90 or less than $90. So we'll say less than or equal to 90. All right, we're asked to graph the inequality. So I know I'm going to use a solid line. Um, and I'm going to use intercepts. So the x-intercept letting y equal 0, if I let y equal 0, 4.5 divide, uh, 90 divided by 4.5, I think that's 20, it is, so I'd have 20, 0, and the y-intercept letting x equal 0, 90 divided by 2.5 is 36. All right, so let's see. Um, what scale to use? Let's use a scale of about 4 on each axis. So 4, 8, we'll call this the x-axis. 12, 16, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40. All right, so now we'll plot the points. Let's see, we got uh, 20, 0, and 0, 36. We'll draw a solid line. through those points. State three possible, okay, uh, wait a second, and now we need to test a point. How about we test zero, zero? Again, zero, zero doesn't pass, uh, doesn't pass through the line. So let me test zero, zero is 4.5 times 0 plus 2.5 times 0 less than or equal to 90. 0 is less than 90, that checks out. So what that tells me is I should shade the side containing 0, 0, so the part below the line. State three possible combinations of hamburgers and chili dogs that the group can buy without going over budget. So really we just need to pick three points that are in the region. So maybe um, four burgers 
and 16 dogs. That would work. It's in this. It's in the region. Um, we could also buy 20 burgers and zero dogs. That's in the region. And let's do one more. How about um, this point right here, nine burgers and seven dogs. So just any points that are in the region. Can the team buy 15 hamburgers and nine chili dogs with their budget? Can the team buy 15? So that would mean x is 15 and y is 9. 15, 9 is right here. It's on the line, it, but you know we've drawn that line. We should probably check this with the original inequality just to be safe. So let's see, 4.5 times 15 plus 2.5 times 9. I'm using, let's see, 4.5 by 15 is 67.5. 2.5 times 9 is 22.5. And adding those together, it's exactly 90. Is 90 less than or equal to 90? Yes. So notice it is exactly on the boundary. All right, so can the team buy 15 hamburgers and 9 chili dogs with their budget? Yes. This combination will cost exactly $90. All right, so finally, let's use the graphing calculator to assist us with graphing these inequalities. So we want to graph 3x plus 4y is less than 10 using the graphing calculator. The first thing we have to do is get the equation in its y equals form. Well, inequality, I should say, in its y equals form. All right, so 3x plus 4y is less than 10. So then 4y is less than negative 3x plus 10. So then y is less than negative 3x plus 10 over Four. And again, remember, we'll throw parentheses around the, the numerator. Now, you could simplify this. I mean, we could write this as y is less than negative 3 fourths x plus 5 halves, if you wanted to. There's nothing wrong with that. All right, so now on the graphing calculator, in our y equals, we type in the y equals, um, so the right hand side, I'm going to use the first form that I had, negative 3x plus 10, close it off and divide by 4. Now we have to adjust this so that it's an inequality. See, if we look over on the left, see that part right there? That tells me it's going to draw a straight line. It's going to draw the line for this equation. We want an inequality. So what we're looking for is a different symbol. Over on the left, if we'll see eventually, if we see this symbol, that is for a less than inequality. And if we see this symbol, that's for a greater than inequality. So since we have a less than inequality, we want to get this first symbol over to the left of the equal sign. All right, so let's do that. Bring our calculator up. Take your cursor and move it all the way to the left over that symbol on the left. And now slowly press Enter. So now this option gives us a thicker line. There's the greater than, and there's the less than. All right, so that's what we want. I want that less than. All right, so now let me check my window. Uh, let me go to a, a standard window, negative 10, 
10, 1, negative 10, 10, 1, and let me graph it. All right, so notice we get that graph. It's shaded below. We can't, the calculator doesn't draw the dotted line. So if you then reproduce this on paper, you need to remember that that should be a dashed line, not a solid line, because our original inequality was a less than inequality. So that's something that you have to remember. All right, so that concludes the presentation for section 2.3.